Hello, welcome to uh, 1110 Bean to Bars uh, episode of making some pralines. I'm going to make some peanut uh, caramel pralines. I have my mold here all shiny and ready to go. I have my chocolate that's hopefully going to temper pretty soon. Um, and what I want to do is make these molds pretty before um, we pour the chocolate in. So I went ahead and mixed up some powders. Um, I used the copper, copper pearl powder, and I also used the pearl. I mixed them together so I get kind of a pinkish color. These are going to be for Mother's Day. Um, I'm making special bonbons and these pralines for Mother's Day this year. And then um, hopefully the moms that get these for Mother's Day will be able to watch the videos on how I make them. So I'm just going to do is like swirl, nothing too much, just enough to give a little character to the chocolate when they're done. If I can do them all and then bang it out once rather than make lots and lots of noise. Um, I like to just make them pretty, um, not just tasty. And I've already got the peanuts mashed up. I'm just gonna mix them with the caramel. Um, but first we're gonna get these molds ready and then we're gonna get that chocolate when it's tempered, pour it in, get our nice shell going. Um, I may do two coats of the chocolate layer just so that we don't get any holes, any seepage. I did some rose powder um, mixed with uh, cocoa butter and I also did orange peel powder mixed with cocoa butter um, to give kind of a yellowish and a pinkish color um, for my bonbons. Just show you here the bonbons. One's missing because my husband tried one. Um, these ones turned out very very lovely. They're raspberry ganache inside one of them here. If you haven't seen the video on how these were made, you should check them out. They're the Mother's Day ones. Um, they are so pretty. So I'm going to be making up boxes, um, chocolate boxes for moms. All right, so I'm going to go and I always use a spoon to check for tempering my chocolate. It does still feel warm, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. Um, all I do is just stick some chocolate on the back of the spoon. It doesn't have to be much, but. And then you let it sit. Um, and if in with two to three minutes, if it hardens, then we are ready to pour. This chocolate was left over from yesterday when I did the bonbons. I'm hoping there's enough, I'm sure there's enough uh, to fill. What I will do is I'll fill all the molds, shake, 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 la la la, and then I'm gonna turn upside down and get rid of the excess chocolate on here. Um, what's great about this paper here is whatever chocolate ends up on there will harden, and then I can put it into a container and save it for another time. Chocolate is very forgiving. As long as it's tempered properly, um, you're gonna get some beautiful chocolate. And these polycarbonate molds, got these from Chocolate World. Um, they're from Belgium. These are my very favorite. I love them and I did not think I'd like them because I've always used just the like the rubbery molds because um, they were easy to debar I guess to pop out of them. But these here when they're ready they will just fall out super handy to have. I do have a bunch of them. I've been kind of stocking up a little bit at a time. Um, just because they're, I think if you're going to be making chocolate as a profession, which I hope I can do one day, they are what you want to have for sure. 
So the chocolate is still not tempered, but it does look like it's starting to, it is starting to thicken. So at least we have some progress. is here already and then I do have some chopped nuts I'm going to add right. I've not made this before so it'll be interesting to see how it works I want it to be somewhat thick just because when you bite into that praline you don't want all the stuff to fall out and be a big giant mess so um, in order for it to thicken some, I am going to put some chocolate in it just so that that chocolate will harden and then it will be thicker. So when you bite into it, it's going to have a little bit of a stay to it. Um, Especially for Mother's Day, I do not want a mom biting into a chocolate and then having her face full of caramel and peanuts. And we're just going to hope that we have enough here to cover. But that looks really good. I can probably eat that right now. I won't, but I would really like to. Typically, I would fill with a piping bed. But because it's caramel and chocolate, I'm not going to do that. Um, and these are actually quite simple to do. I haven't used this mold yet, so I'm super excited about it. And I'm hoping that the chocolate, I'm worried about these little gaps in here. But because it's a professional mold, I really shouldn't worry. I'm going to put the first layer in. I'm going to hopefully get it somewhat nice and thick. Bang out the rest. Um, oh, and I do need one scraper. Wow. It helps if you have all your tools when you, um, before you start. This is invaluable tool as well. Um, but just like that. And you want to keep your mold clear on top, especially if you're going to be filling. You definitely want to keep that clear because when it, it gets ready to unmold, it actually separates from the mold itself. And then if you go to turn it upside down, you've all this caked chocolate all over it, um, then that all is going to stay with it. And it's going to make, yeah, it's not pretty. I've actually done it. So I try to make sure that this is super clean. And I noticed yesterday when I was doing the bonbons that it was, I kept it super, super clean and they came out beautiful. The bottoms are perfect. There's no, yeah. Check it out anyway and you'll be able to see what the bottoms looked like. Um, super, super fun. Okay, that is not tempered. I'm going to try another one. It does take a while to temper. I may just pop it in the fridge for a minute. 30 seconds or something um, just to speed up that process a little bit I never leave it in too long um, I don't actually like to put my chocolate in the fridge but for time's sake I have two weeks um, to sell for Mother's Day uh, I have a store that I've been selling my chocolate in uh, Purple Hippo downtown Lethbridge um, on 6th Street just off of 3rd Avenue. In case anybody here is from Lethbridge and wants to check it out, that's where I am. I also am doing um, markets right now. Thursday afternoons in Blairmore, Alberta. Uh, the Crow's Nest Pass from 3 to 7. So I'll be doing them like, this week, uh, which is still last, this is the last week in April. And then I'll be doing the ones in May. Um, 2022 in case this video is around a long time from now so I have Mother's Day I want to sell some Mother's Day market stuff at that market and then I'm doing a Mother's Day market in Lethbridge um, next Saturday so I have to have enough chocolates for the store 
for the markets, for two markets for the wheat, and then of course the one for the Mother's Day market. Um, another one that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing some flowers. I have some like cake cookie, cake molds or whatever, um, flower ones. So I'm going to be doing some chocolate, doing some colors, uh, making some really pretty chocolates. Um, they're probably about that big, nice flowers. So I'll do them in the centers and then do some bonbons around. Um, I'm hoping that I can get to those. I don't think I'm going to get to them this week. Uh, possibly, maybe Wednesday. Um, we'll definitely see how it goes, but I'm not uh, not sure I will be able to. I do want to put some Mother's Day bonbons, the ones I made yesterday, and these pralines. I will put little boxes in the store tomorrow. Um, Purple Hippo is open Tuesday to Saturday. So tomorrow when I go, I do want to put some just to get that Mother's Day market. Well, Mother's Day things selling, right? So that's coming. But this chocolate is so good. All my chocolate is bean to bar. So these all, all this chocolate started out as cocoa beans. This particular batch is actually a mixture. There's, um, I put six, there's 65, no, 77% dark. And there's some milk chocolate in there as well. And there is a little bit of espresso chocolate in there. So what had happened yesterday is I was concerned I would not have enough chocolate to do all of those bonbons. So when I make chocolate, I always have extra. Um, so I put it away, um, and then when I need it, I can melt it down and use it. So that's what this chocolate is. It's a mixture. Um, I also have some left over from Easter, and this is my berry milk. This is my berry chocolate. Um, if you haven't heard about it, watch the videos on how I make this berry chocolate. So these did not sell from Easter. I've kept them because I'm going to melt them down and I'm actually going to put them in a piping bag and I'm going to write mom and then lift it because it, this does beautiful. So I'm going to try writing um, and then put those in the gift boxes for mom. So a nice little mom treat in a berry flavored chocolate. Now this chocolate there's no added color. I did not add dye to make that pink. Um, and it, it does not actually taste like chocolate. It tastes like berries. And I didn't actually add anything to make it taste like berries. This is um, Mexican Lovato's cocoa bean. And they do not ferment them there. So what I do is I, as I peel them, or I get my parents and my husband to peel them, I grind them up into cocoa nibs and then I soak them in citric acid for 24 hours. Um, and what you have is like a really rich red color. Uh, I put them in the, through my, co um, through my peanut butter maker, which you can see on my videos, how I do that. And out comes the cocoa liqueur. So it's like a, a paste. From there, I put it in my melanger, which is actually running right now, so a batch of white chocolate. Um, I put them in my melanger and I add milk powder I add sugar um, and then that's it. So between the cocoa liqueur, which is just ground up cocoa nibs, and the powder, uh, sugar and powder milk, that's it. We end up with a pink chocolate. Um, I do add vanilla to that batch after it's pulled out of the melange and I mix it just for flavoring um, because the, the berry can be a little overpowering. But definitely give it a try if you um, if you live close by and you want to check out the berry milk chocolate or the berry chocolate. I'm also doing a new flavor, which is berry milk. So I'm actually mixing my berry chocolate with milk chocolate. It's a, it's exclusive to me. Um, you can certainly buy berry milk chocolate with you know, milk chocolate with berries in it. This doesn't have any berries. Um, so I've done these little bars. So my berry milk bubble bars. And then I've done some roses. Now these are gonna be for Mother's Day, um, but with the signature flavor, I'm hoping that it catches on because it, it is a very nice, um, 
smooth milk chocolate with that little hint of berry in it. Um, and of course I make small batches, so by the time you watch this video, I may not, probably will not have a, this particular batch out, but I'm going to keep making batches of that particular chocolate because it is so, so very good. Um, so we're still waiting on the tempering of this. It's not happening quite as fast as I hope. We will uh, give it another minute. Um, I go through a lot of spoons, as you will see in my videos. I don't like to contaminate anything. Um, I wash my hands probably a hundred times a day. But I make soaps as well. So I have some really great soaps that are good for my skin um, that I use to wash my hands with. So I'm not getting not taking any chances with germs and this looks really good that is going to taste very good I'm not going to taste it yet but it is going to be very yummy and my no longer stop so it's nice and quiet in here um, it's defective it's supposed to run continuously um, but it overheats so it shuts off after half an hour and then it will kick back on probably in about 45 minutes or so, but then it'll only run for 15. So it'll run all day. Um, I'm gonna check it later this afternoon. Um, I did, typically when I put things in the melanger, I put them through the grinder, um, coffee grinder. So milk powder, I grind it into a finer powder. Sugar, grind it into a powder. Um, this particular batch, I didn't grind at all just for the fact that I needed to hurry up and get it done because I did want to be able to do um, these white chocolate bonbons today. I have some raspberry ganache left over from yesterday's batch, so I wanted to do a white chocolate. Um, so I was hoping that I could get them barred today. Um, for time's sake, I want to get as much done as I possibly can, as I do have the market on Thursday, and I want to be able to have enough stock to stock the store and to sell at the market. The great thing is chocolate doesn't go bad, so what I don't sell um, at this market can either be taken to the store and sold, or I can wait till the following market and sell them. Um, I do have quite a bit of chocolate in stock, just the bars, and I make these little um, adorable little, I don't think I have any, uh, bear paws. Yes, I do actually. So these particular bear paws are 77% um, dark chocolate, uh, but they're sugar free. So I use Kubius powder sweetener. Um, but as you can see, hopefully you can see the little tiny paws. Super cute. I love these molds. Um, you will see if you watch my videos, I try to use those molds for everything and as well as these chocolate bar molds. I love them. They're thin. Um, I love chocolate and what I find is when I eat this particular chocolate, I don't need a whole giant chocolate bar. Um, I get cravings for chocolate often. Um, but all I need is a piece or two. It is very good. It's very smooth and putting it through that melanger makes it extremely smooth. Um, and I also have been using the contour attachment too. If you watch my videos, you'll be able to see what the contour is and what it does, um, which will give that bar the shine. As you can see, there is a shine to that bar. It's kind of hard to see, but anyway, it is there. Um, that is what makes good chocolate. I want people to experience it when they have this chocolate. I don't want it to just be wolf down a chocolate bar because it looks good and tastes good, um, but to actually experience it and to appreciate the flavor um, and the time that went into it. it. It's a lot of work to make chocolate. Um, not that I'm complaining at all because I absolutely, I love, love, love making chocolate. Um, if I could give it away, I would, um, but this is what I need to bi build a business, um, a business on. I did lose my job back in January. Um, this is now the end of April. So, um, I put everything I had into chocolate to make a go of it. So I'm starting with markets. Um, and then I've got the, the shelf in that store in the Purple Hippos. So hopefully 
that will generate some interest. Um, I am the only, as of right now, the only bean to bar um, in Southern Alberta, as well as um, a lot of people are either chocolate maker, which is the bean to bar, or they're chocolatier. So chocolate maker takes the beans and makes chocolates. This here is a chocolatier. That's what chocolatiers do, is they make the bonbons, they make the fancy chocolates, um, the pralines. So I am um, not only a chocolate maker, but I'm also a chocolatier. So there is nobody in Southern Alberta that's doing that right now. Um, and if and if there is somebody, please correct me. But as of this moment, um, there isn't. I've done a lot of research. There is in Calgary, and I know there is a bean to bar in Bernie, BC. Um, but as far as bean chocolate shears, I'm not sure that there are any. Um, so it's a. I'm hoping that it'll. Um, there is a market for it. I certainly would love to do. Um, I would love for this to go somewhere. I eventually would like to have a um, a chocolate shop um, and have chocolate tasting. Now this is starting to thicken. It's feeling like it's close. I'm just hoping that this will harden. It's a beautiful day outside and I am inside making chocolate. I'm not going to complain. Um, it gets warmer in the later afternoon. I'm definitely a morning person. It's about 9 o'clock in the morning here. Um, so I'll probably wrap up around 4 um, just because I do have to make supper in the kitchen. Typically I'll wrap up around 4 and then um, a lot of times I'll come back to working in the evenings and work till around eight or nine, depending on the day and what's going on. But because I do have chocolate in that melanger, um, I'm probably going to be doing these praline or these um, bonbons later today, hopefully. Um, and I'll definitely be doing video on that. So it'll be white chocolate bonbons if you want to look that up for Mother's Day. I'm gonna try to have Mother's Day as the headline for all of these, um, just so they kind of group together and we know what's going on. So it does look like it's starting to maybe thicken up a little bit. Let me for a few seconds. So I think I have everything I need. Um, and this is kind of thickening too with that chocolate in it. So it's not so, yeah, not so runny. And I am going to save this powder because I've mixed the color before. I had mixed it before to make this color. Um, and then I had it sitting on the counter too long and I didn't want any contaminants in it. So I'm going to cover it and save it. Um, I definitely like that color um, for moms especially. I think it's pretty cool. Now it does look like we are, I think I said this before, but I think we're close. It is starting to thicken, as you can see here. I'm gonna go ahead and swipe that too. You see that? So, now, if, it, if I poured this and it wasn't tempered properly, you're going to get spots. So the cocoa fat, um, the cocoa butter within that cocoa will separate from the cocoa itself. And that's how you get spots. If you ever open up a chocolate bar you bought in a store and you get like white in it, it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that fat separated from the cocoa. So never worry about it. What I find is a lot of times I'll go to pour and I'll wait too long and then I end up with a goopy mess. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. And fill the molds, fill the molds, fill the molds. Um, this is just to ensure that I'm getting all the edges and corners, but I do wanna make sure that I have enough. So I'm kind of hurrying and then I go back um, and fill. As I go, 
just those corners are going to be the part that I'm going to worry about. Little edges. Of course, this is not staying, but um, so shake, shake, shake. You want to get every little bit of those molds. Um, like those little edges are going to be hard to get. You can see here this one here did not so i'm really gonna struggle with them so i want to make sure before i pour it out that they all have been filled because i know what will happen in the end is i'll end up with little leaks out these corners So it's starting to thicken, so I kind of have to move a little bit faster. Um, what I'm going to do is just slide along these edges. Make sure that we're completely covered. Um, I can do another layer. I just may have to do... Um, yeah, I may have to do another batch of chocolate. I have lots of chocolate bars, so if I have to break down some bars, um, I'm fine to do that. I'm going to put as much as I can back in this mold, although I don't think much will remain, which is fine. All right. That's about as cute as I'm going to get there. Now I'm just going to flip it upside down. And shake, shake, shake. Um, also tapping it too will get the excess out because I don't want like these particular molds are not thick at all like they're not deep really deep so I want to make sure that I don't have too much chocolate which I end up having I do actually have too much chocolate in there um, it hardens pretty quick so as you can see there's some pretty goopy little things here so I'm gonna try to take out some of that chocolate without You definitely don't want to mess with it, um, but I do want to get some of that chocolate out. The chocolate's good enough by itself, so it's not like it's going to ruin, it's not going to ruin them at all. Um, but I still like to have... All right. So we got a nice clean surface now. Um, and that's as good as it's going to get. I'm not going to do another layer. Um, the corners have done very nicely. And the edges are pretty good. Um, so I think, I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it the way it is. It's hardening pretty quick because it was tempered to the right. As you can see, it's hardening really well. So it was tempered good. Just clean that knife off a little bit because we're going to need that chocolate to seal them up at the end. Um, I may even use white chocolate. No, no, I don't think white chocolate would damage it. It'd be kind of neat, interesting to have a white chocolate bottom on them, though. Um, So I'm going to let, just let this harden for a bit. We will come back um, when I do the filling, and then I'll have the chocolate. I'll have the chocolate ready, tempered um, to seal off, so we won't have to wait so long the next time. So catch, um, stay tuned, and let's see. Uh, I think we'll only have like two videos left um, until we do the reveal. So stay tuned. Watch again.